All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Martin Brooks, who is over the other side of the world, across the pond, as they like to say here, in uh, St. Albans, just outside London. How are you doing, Martin? I'm doing extremely well, John. Glad yes. to be here. Yeah, anytime I travel home, it's a rather large pond, actually. I don't know why they call it across the <laughs> pond, but there you go. Um, and, um, and Martin has always been curious about how the world's top communicators use their body language to enhance their performance and make, make an impact and boost their chances of success. And that's why Martin's job title is a fantastic one. Martin is an impactologist. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And what we're going to talk about today is is how to decipher body language or what somebody's really thinking through their body language. I, I feel like I should really switch off my camera in case I get out of this. <laughs> um, and you just re you have this uh, product called the Body Language Decoder, a 50 card deck which shows common body language patterns. So first of all, just uh, take a step back for a moment, Martin. How did you get into this area in the first place? Now, so my background before I get into training and development was in sales and sales leadership in the travel industry. And in, that, in being a sales and sales leader, I was always interested in success and what made one salesperson more successful or over another. So I set about researching what the best salespeople in my organization did. And then when I became a leader, I need to teach other people. And that just drew me down deeper and deeper, more interesting foxholes in what a psychology professor once said to me was, what's the difference that makes the difference? If one person is so much more successful than somebody else, why? There has to be a science behind it. And then body language was one of those delightful foxholes that I went down and then uh, enjoyed being down there a great deal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, so the thing about uh, body language is, right, is, I mean, we interpret it all the time, you know, not just naturally, we're kind of unconsciously, Mm. But but we're not always interpreting exactly. We're not often correctly interpreting things because we don't really know how to read it properly. So we're yeah. So maybe a better way of putting it is we're misinterpreting body language on quite regularly. Yeah, there's a fantastic lady called Pamela Meyer who gave one of the I think it's the eleventh most popular TED talk on deception and the body language of deception. And she said, lots of people think they're good at reading deception, but actually analyze it if they only get it right about 54% of the time, which is just slightly better than half. Are they yeah. lying? Are they not? Which you'd pretty good get close to with pure chance. So we have this idea that we're good at reading it, but actually when you, when you measure it, we're not, partic we're not particularly. And one of the reasons, of course, is that we don't know what we're reading. We're, we're, what, are, what are the signals and what do they actually mean? And that was one of the things that I was very keen in Body Language Decoder to do, to show people that this is what this looks like, both from an observational point of view and from somebody who actually wants to be more excellent in their communication. How can they use their body language more effectively as well? Yeah, and and the product that you you built, I mean, it is actually a pack of cards. I'm just looking mm. at it now here. Um, so tell me, like, what is the process that you go through? How do you use these cards, and and how would you integrate them into how you how you do business? Yeah, the great thing about it is that there's no necessarily logical order. It's not like a book. You've got to start on page one and chapter one and work your way through it. They are fifty cards. Now they're they're bunched together into. Uh, actual categories like deception was one of the ones, for example, or confidence. But any one of the cards, you can just pick up, look at it, and go, "Oh yeah, that's interesting." I've kind of, I wonder what that's. I think I've seen that. Flip the card over, and then on the other side is a written description of what that body language is, where it comes from, and uh, hints and tips about how you can actually use it. And the idea around being a, being a card deck rather than a book was like, well, body language is a very visual thing. So when the publishers first came to me, I loved the idea that it was an even 50-50 split between the visual aspect of body language and then the, the, the written word explanation of, well, this is what you're looking at. This is what, how you can use it. And this is what, how you can accurately, more accurately, as we said before, interpret it. Yeah. So, um, so when you're when you're working with people and, and coaching them, what are what are some of the typical things you tell them? What are some of the simple things you tell them to look out for? 
some of the simple things that I ask people to look out for, let's say, for example, we're looking at the, the, the wor wonderful world of deception. I, I would give some hints and tips on that. And obviously, uh, politicians are always on our TV screens and they're a wonderful case study of deception, the old idea. How can you tell if a politician is lying? The old body language clue, well, their lips are moving. Therefore, exactly. therefore, there is some level of deception going on. And over your side of the pond, you've got a wonderful example of this many years ago when President Richard Nixon came on television and said, and said the infamous words, excuse my bad impersonation, but he went, people need to know whether or not their presidents are crook. Well, I'm, and watch my head, I'm not a crook. I nodded his head, yes. <laughs> and then he said, I earned everything that I've got and shook his head, no. So those are classically called truth slips. That's when the, the mouth says one thing, but the body language communicates much more accurately or indeed honestly. So when you're communicating with people, very often, like you say, you know, there's that idea that we think we're reading stuff. But it's more like a, almost like an intuitive feeling. We get a, we get that funny feeling. I'm not so sure that this person is telling me the truth, or I'm not so sure that this source person really knows what they're talking about, or I'm not so sure that supplier can really deliver on the dates that they're that they're that they're saying they can. But we're unable to kind of you know, well, what is it? I'm, I'm, is my is my little sixth sense off? And that's what again I think the cards do. They say, well, look, if you see this. That's a clear signal. Investigate more, ask more questions. Like anything you're analyzing, the more data you've got, the more likely you are to be accurate. So don't just go on one thing, ask more questions, find more things out, and then uh, take it from there. Then you can make a more informed decision, albeit prompted by your, your, your sixth sense or your gut instinct or whatever you want to call it. And then uh, um, flipping it on the other side, when you are engaging with people, as in anyone, when one mm. is engaging with people, when one, how, yes. when one, yes, <laughs> how does how do you make sure that you're not communicating the wrong thing? I mean, maybe through your own body language, you're communicating, like you just said. I mean, you're communicating one thing, but you're saying another, but you're doing it unconsciously. Yeah. I mean, the, the big thing for me around body language, both in reading other people and becoming more aware of what we ourselves are doing is awareness. Start paying attention. And it's really interesting. I, like you, possibly everybody who's listening to this, hate watching ourselves being recorded. We hate watching ourselves back. Now, if we were really comfortable with watching ourselves back, then there wouldn't be that lesson it would, as in, oh, is that what I really look like? Because we become fully conscious in that moment of what we look like and what we sound like, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, oh, I really kind of rather, rather not know. <laughs> so it's get past that uncomfortableness and start paying attention to ourselves and what other people are giving out. I said the best way of learning about body language is pay attention to people that you like, that you feel that you trust, that inspire, that motivate you, that influence you. And just be curious, how do they do that? You know, watch your, take that favorite TED talk that you've got and turn the sound off. Watch it again with the sound off. What is it about the way that person is communicating visually through their body language as well as their words that is having that effect on you, is making you engage and is making you want to take some uh, action. Like in business, we have the, the call to action. It's making you want to do that. Yeah, I love that. That's a fantastic suggestion, though, is to look at your favorite TED talk or your favorite speaker or whatever it is and put it, put the sound, uh, mute the sound and watch it. The other thing I wanted to come back on, too, is uh, there's really no excuse nowadays because it's so easy. I mean, everybody's doing Zoom calls, even people who, mm. who are, you know, over the last couple of years and people who aren't even working are using Zoom, right? I mean, it's become so ubiquitous. So it's very easy for you to record yourself and watch yourself back or watch yourself in general and uh and i think that's a you know it's a great opportunity because you're correct i yeah most people don't like doing it it's like back in the old days you know back in the old days when we first had tape recorders you can find them in your local museum yeah. um you know for hearing our voice on tape for the first time we're like ah that's not me and you're going well yeah. i'm afraid it is uh, yeah. but i think you're right you got to get over that fear but you have all the tools now to be able to do it yeah, it's, it's very easy to do. I, I've done a lot of work with helping uh, individuals and sales teams, you know, present the pitch, you know, to go highly competitive. They want every advantage that they can. 
And of course, the first thing I'll do is, okay, take your draft pitch and then I'll film it. And they go, oh, don't film me. I go, mm -hmm. why not? <laughs> why not? You know, so I'm like, you don't want to see it. Well, hang on a second. If you're going to go in there and you're going to be better than everybody else, one of those things is you got to look better than everybody else. And if you're worried about what I'm going to see or what's going to be captured on camera, you know, that's a, that's a warning bell. And like a lot of scenarios, you know, you may prepare your content, but the best people also prepare their body language. They also think about how they're going to use their body, their voice, the words they choose, not just the technical data that they've got to present to win their audience over, but the whole package, what they say, how they say it, and how they look whilst they're saying it to give themselves the best possible chance of sales success. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd highly encourage people like, you know, record yourself, do exactly what, um, do exactly what we're talking about here and, and examine, look at yourself. I mean, I do it all the time, but then I'm just a narcissist. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do actually, you know, just to make sure I keep myself honest. But here's the other thing. Um, here's the other thing, Martin, is about um, a lot of this stuff has been done virtual, like we're doing right now. Yeah. And some people would assume saying, oh, well, body language goes out the window when you're on virtual, right? Yeah, uh, this is possibly the biggest misconception going right now, because it's been really fascinating over the past couple of years watching how all of these things have evolved. And actually, I've come to the conclusion that body language is even more important virtually than it is face to face. Why, we might ask? Because it's so easy to disengage virtually. You know, people can pick up their, their phone and just, I mean, I'm, my phone is out of shot now and I can be kind of looking at it, the notification going ping, ping, ping. You know, it's literally, it's just right there. Now you would never do that in a meeting. You wouldn't sit in a one-to-one -one with your phone li literally just there, but you can get away with it virtually. So the counterbalance to that is to be engaging. You know, I, I often, when I was coaching, uh, I do a lot of work coaching keynote speakers and I used to say, shake your audience off enough at the start with your opening that they will put their phones down and they're just engaged with you. So similar thing virtually. Now, how do we do that? Of course, in our content, but also human beings, our primary sense is our sight. Yep. You got to visually engage people, give them something to look at, emphasize your key points with your, with your hands, make sure your face is really animated. And that in itself visually will draw people to the screen, draw people to what it is that you're saying, and may, of course make them less likely to check out those notifications on their phone. Yeah, no, that's a great piece of advice too, because uh, unfortunately a lot of people look at, they look like hostage videos. <laughs> uh, when people are on because they're really stiff and they're trying to uh, and they look very uncomfortable and they look as if they're doing, doing something against their will. Mm. Yeah, and I've, I've seen this thing now where, where, where some people actually do a recorded loop of about 10 seconds of themselves, you know, nodding wistfully and then <laughs> and smiling and, and then just playing that as a background, but they're actually off making a sandwich in the kitchen at that point in time. <laughs> I hadn't heard of that. That's all. I tell you, Pete, you've got to admire people. <laughs> you do, well, you do, you do. You got, you got to admire the ingenuity of, of, of people. If they you know, different just channel it into a more positive fashion, exactly. But hey, don't don't underestimate the ingenuity or innovativeness of lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so as we move forward, I mean, what do you think is? Um, how much more important do you think understanding body language is going to become? Because here's another throw another challenge into the mix, right? Mm. Uh, we're global, right? I mean, especially if you're doing stuff online or whatever. But anyway, I mean, and different cultures express their their body language in different ways sometimes. So how do you, how do you deal with that if you're somebody and you're dealing with somebody from another culture and you're not quite sure of what their body language means? Yeah, so you get certain generic things that are true for people all around the world. I mean, there's no culture in the world where they don't express happiness with a smile, for example. Right. Okay, I mean, those are kind of generic things. We have this, all the same basic seven emotions that we express on our faces. For example, from uh, Professor Ekman's uh, research, he's like the, the face expert. But then you get cultural differences and you, and you get cultural hand gestures. So for example, I've got the, this one where like the, the hand is, all the fingertips are pointing towards the sky, but they're brought together. I call it, and that's the essence gesture. So you say, look, out of all the details, the key message here, we call that the essence gesture. But if you take that gesture and you kind of do it like that, and you're in Italy, it means something very different. You know, it's a little on the rude side. 
<laughs> so like anything, it's like in the olden days, you know, where I jump on a plane and I'd go to be working on behalf of a client and I say M Malaysia, I would say to the client, look, what are some of the customs that I need to be aware of? What are the certain some of the cultural things that are are specific to that part of the world that I need to I need to be aware of? So almost getting like a little cultural brief from people who know those international teams more often, because now we're not jumping on planes and flying all over the world, but we are doing a lot more international communication through zoom because it's possible now it's a, and everybody accepts it as a way of, of doing things so it's the same thing you know go to people who know those that culture and say look what should I, is there something i shouldn't be doing or something i should be doing from a body language perspective that's useful you know clue me up from a local expert that's always my tip yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a great piece of advice, and and I do believe there's places actually where they 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 um, shake their head for yes and nod for no. So that's got to be wonderful when you arrive in a place like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, I, I I did a lot of work in India a couple of years ago, and experiencing it firsthand, I would I, I would ask people, can you do that? And they go, oh yes, Mister Brooks, and I'd be like. And like, but my ears went good, and then my head went no. There's something really wrong here. It took me quite a while to wrap my head around it. That's <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, so, um, just just in the last couple of minutes here, pick out a favorite, a couple of favorites of your um, of your cards, uh, and just a couple of different body language tips for for people. Yeah, sure. Favorites. So, so one one of my favorite ones is, is some of the the, the confidence uh, gestures. So, for example, we've got the uh, the Barack Obama's favorite, the pinch of salt. So, like, it's almost like you have the, the holding a pinch of salt between the tip of your thumb and your forefinger, while the rest of your hand makes a relaxed fist. So, a fist is a is a dominance gesture. That's an aggressive gesture. But when you soften the fist, so this is a, the, known as the pinch of salt, you get assertion rather than aggression and confidence. Uh, another one of uh, Bill Clinton's favorite was, was known as the thumb of power, where again, the fist is softened again, but the thumb is then held in the crook of the forefinger and he would do that. This is what we need to do. This is why this is so important. In fact, Barack Obama did that 93 times in his first inauguration speech, like borrowing Clinton's power gesture and using it. And Joe Biden this year in his presidential election he did the double-handed parallel hand chop 76 times throughout his inauguration speech in order to get his key points across so so we, we've got the kind of like reading deceptive tells but then like those are some of the confidence gestures that you can use to go hey i know my stuff believe in me trust me invest in me you know work with work with our company we know what we're doing. This gives them that visual comfort blanket as well. Yeah, and probably a few uh, Clinton videos you could uh, analyze for the deceptive one too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially yes, around the time of his impeachment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> in, in, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Yeah. So these are, I mean, so the things that you outlined there are, are are very simple things that people could incorporate in into, which is obviously the power of the of the cards here. But simple things that you can incorporate, and you could practice using that will immediately mm. kind of elevate the way you present, right? Absolutely. I mean, I've got a twenty year background in, in learning and development. And one of the things that I've learned from bitter experience, if you say to somebody. Okay, if you want to succeed, here's your 15 steps that you must do in sequence in order to be more successful. And people can't remember stuff like that. But if you just say, hey, look, take your hands, hold them up like this. And every time you want to emphasize something, just do that. That's called the parallel hand shot. That takes about 30 seconds to teach somebody and instantly they can go off and do it. And it would make that visual difference in terms of how confident, not only that they look, but also that they feel. We start doing more confidence gestures. It actually creates that, what I call a confidence loop. Oh, look, people are responding to my confidence gesture. I'm feeling more confident as a result. So there's like a, a nice little immediate positive feedback that people get both externally and also internally. And yeah, make learning easy has always been something that I believe in and make it fun as well. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, w I would agree, especially because we live in this shortcut culture where people just like, uh, are not interested in doing anything that looks like hard work Indeed. Um, but this is great but i guess then the the one thing then you obviously have to caution people is overusing right i mean you just have, maybe you say okay this this is a gesture i'm going to use this gesture and then you suddenly are overusing and you're using it at the wrong time so you do have to do a little bit of learning or like how to apply it when it's effective when you shouldn't be using it 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any any overuse of any good thing then become a bad thing. It's like, and then it becomes one of those things. It's almost like when we was doing presentation coaching and people would go um, or, uh, what we call filler sounds. And anytime I was in a group of more than six people, somebody will be counting them. You know, after a period of time, so, oh, 23, 24. And if you use one gesture too much, then it can come into the conscious awareness of people. And nobody's ever said to me, oh, Martin, the fact that you did that 25 times in your, your 19 minute you know, TED, TED style talk really imbued me to you. No, it wasn't. You never want people to register consciously. It's, it's always like I say, body language is like a good supporting actor. They never take away from the key person in the front doing their stuff but they're there in the background making them look good and that's what body language really does it's never meant to be right up there in people's faces but a your body language is a good supporting actor i think that's a good way of thinking of it yeah no, that, that's fantastic that's a great piece of advice um listen martin this has been fantastic and all of martin's information is going to be below this video so i would encourage you to go check it out but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do yeah, sure. So I specialize in communication. I specialize in helping being more successful through their communication. And I do that through uh, training, coaching, development. But also I've got a whole suite of online stuff. I've got a video course on Teachable called Body Language Mastery. That's got 101 videos. And like you said earlier, it's nice, short, sharp little learning. The, I think the average is 87 seconds, the video clips. You can go in, watch something, learn something and take it away and of course purchase body language decoder that's available on amazon and i've got lots of free tools and tips on my website success through impact.com or go find me on linkedin martin brooks B R O O K S. yeah and i would encourage people go check out go check out uh, martin stuff go check out the the cards I mean, it's such a simple but powerful idea. Something so easy to use could make. To be honest, if you're if you're giving out gifts to people and whatever, yeah, uh, customers or whatever. I mean, who wouldn't want to get a, a a deck of cards with something like this? I think it's a fantastic idea. I love it. All right. Well, listen then. Thanks again, Martin. This is fantastic. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, John.